Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to be playing a visual novel called uh, Cinderella Phenomenon. I had this game in my Steam library for a while and I kind of forgot about it, so we're going to be playing it in this video. Um, yeah, this is the intro. Uh, this is kind of awkward. But yeah, let's just get into the game. Okay, we're just going to start a new game here. We recommend viewing the tutorial if this is your first time playing a Rempy visual novel. Would you like to view the tutorial? I guess. Quick run through the shortcuts and functions of the Cinderella phenomenon. To advance through text, click the spacebar and enter. Okay, so that's common sense. Should you miss a line or two while reading, you can always click the back button in the quick menu that is located on the upper right hand corner of the text box. There's a limited amount of lines you can roll back to when you use this function. The shortcut for this function is page up. For the lines you've already seen, you can click the skip button to toggle the activation to skip mode. The keyboard shortcut for this function is tab or holding control. For the best experience, you may activate auto forward mode. It can also be deactivated when you advance the text manually. The text speed and time for the delay may be just to three seconds. You know what, guys? You know what I just forgot? I forgot to grab my headphones. Uh, hold on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. I'm back, and I remembered. Hey, okay, in-game menus, which consist of settings and save files, can be... Access by clicking on the glass slipper or simply pressing right, pr right click. Settings menu, you can customize your reading and experience. You can also enable or disable full screen mode, a right choice indicator, and skip mode function. Okay. I can even adjust text speed. Okay. 72 save files. Okay. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. One was the crystal of Luth- I don't know how to- I'm gonna watch this, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. I'm totally gonna watch this, you guys. The Wait till the volume goes away. Chris crystal um luscious, protected by the ruler of the fairies. The other was the crystal um tanaburum which was watched over by the High Leader of the Witches. The Lucius was sustained by love, happiness, and joy. I don't- uh... The town of Brim by fear, anger, and hatred. The fairies of witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. Regulated the powers of the crystal in order to gain balance. Between darkness and light. For there can be no joy without sadness, no courage without fear. The kingdom was at peace for a time. And one day a traveling bird said to write story, tales of the magical wonders of the kingdom. <clears throat> he named these stories fairy tales. Fairy tales the light always emerged from glorious, and true love was a huge more reward. Fairy tales spread further than could have been predicted. The humans of the kingdom began to believe that fairy tales were true, and that the magic of the witches was inherently wicked and cruel. The witches became hated, hated and feared. Hated and feared. Well, they probably become hated too. Eventually, they were hunted like animals. The witch hunt. The high leader of the witches, in all their anger, created the fairy tale witches. You think you're wicked? Wicked? So be it. Just as you've taken our happily ever after, we shall take yours. The witches used the fairy tale curse to attack humans indiscriminately, ultimately throwing the kingdom in chaos and darkness. The ruler of the fairies, the, the malicious bearer, sought to regain peace. But the witches were blinded by their hatred for humans, who were responsible for the witch genocide. The terrible war, the Great War, began. Eventually, the Tanabra bearer, the high leader of the witches, was finally defeated. Tenebrum was lost, peace was restored, light once again trapped. But darkness can never fully disappear. It waits in the shadows, patient, patient for what this time will inevitably return. Oh, we can actually put our name? Uh Jeez, this is a good question. Uh We'll put... 
I'll just put Kitty plays games. It's great. Oh, it's not enough. We'll do... We'll just do brownie for now, I guess. That's all I can think of. Prologue, the palace. Okay. Hey, yeah, guys, I don't know how long this game is gonna be. I don't know. My name is Brownie Ryla Britton, daughter of King King of Britain III. I'm the crown princess of the kingdom of Angio. And most of the stuff I'm probably gonna botch. At least that was who I used to be. That was before yesterday when I became a victim of the infamous fairy tale curse. Okay. Everyone has forgotten my birth rate. Now I'm nothing more than a lonely peasant. I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare. But no, this is my reality now. I still have no idea what I must do for the curse. I close my eyes and remember that day. It's not like any other day. Have you heard? Another person was cursed. Okay, so this is us here, I guess. I'm on my way to the dining hall for breakfast when I stop and listen to the sound of hushed voices. There are two maids standing next to each other with brooms in hand. These two are slacking off again. That's terrible! What fairy tale curse was it? They say it was Pinocchio. Oh. Pinocchio? Fairy tale with the live boy who's not cursed with mugger? That's awful. You know, more and more people have been getting cursed lately. You think those wicked witches are up to something again? It's not the fairy tale curses would stop after you in, after you know who was defeated. You two were hired to work, not talk. We're, we're sorry, your highness. As can only be expected from the likes of them. Oh, so she's one of those people. Okay. I understand. Well, then again, she's kind of royalty, so... Another failed fairy tale curse? The original curse started spreading even before the Great War, be war began. I do you know how much interest in its effects, even now? After all, most humans probably deserve to get cursed. Victims are weak. Okay, that's a low blow. That's a low blow even for her. But she, she's probably gonna get what's coming to her anyway, most likely. I know we'd be better off without the dead weight. Oh. Okay, that's... Just don't do that. If you're out to mother, the cursed would have been banished from Ant Ant of the Clump, right? Okay, then... Because we know you're gonna get cursed because it said it in the beginning, so... Meaning that if you... If you got cursed... She... She would be, um... Banished from... From it, I guess. But mother's not here anymore. She will not come back. Ever. Princess, King and Queen are waiting in the dining hall. I'm on my way. Wait, I thought she said her mother wasn't around anymore, unless it's, uh... Stepmother. King, Ophelia, and Rod are all present in the dining hall. Someone is completely missing, but I know they're absent. Good morning, Brownie. That's their... Father? Okay. Good morning, Your Majesty. Good morning, Brownie. Brownie. Okay, so I think this is uh, um, her stepmother or something, I think. Ophelia. Ophelia Widensov. Every day I wonder why my father, the king, married a lonely baker. She can never be a true king, for she fails in comparison to mother. Take my seat next to the king and look up at the person sitting opposite me. Okay, that, that bunny right there is actually kind of cute. Rob Benedict Winsov, my stepbrother, was bored and quiet as usual. He was two years my junior and is the younger of Ophelia's children. He is mute and gives the flesh bunny to his thoughts. It was apparently given to him by a fairy. He minds his own business it's easy to, and is easy to deal with. But his older sister. I just go to the empty seat beside him. She's probably the most infuriating person I've ever had the displeasure of knowing. That's 
so sorry I'm late. I was reading it at the time. Here she is. Good morning, dear father, mother. Good morning, Rob. And good morning to you, Brownie. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Angeline went and saw Rod's elder sister and my stepsister. Yeah, okay. I figured that. She asked us if we were blood, as if she was too as if she too was born a princess. As if she could be crowned princess and perhaps steal my place. I'll never let that happen. Now that everyone is here, I'll just begin. While this glided cell with silver trays to carefully serve his breakfast. So, Imagine, you're reading the fairy tale books that the king brought you. Oh yes! There's so many and they're all so wonderful! Thank you so much, Father! I'm happy that you like them. I love them! It's so strange that the library didn't have any of them to begin with. That is because Mother hated them. She had all the books burned. Wow, what a buzzkill. <laughs> okay. But why? They're such charming stories. Fairy tales mislead. Fairy tales mislead humans into believing they can have things they do not deserve. Fame, riches, love, happily ever afters. So I'm assuming the king's not very happy with that. I know we're the daughter and all that, but I think we're a little bit stuck. Or sorry, not a little bit stuck. Up. We are stuck up a big time. But their wishes do not come to interpretation, it's not because they want them to. He even explained that the witches were crafted in the first place. What are you implying about the witches, Brad? The atmosphere shifts, the air in the room growing heavy. I continue to eat. Perhaps witches are not responsible for the evil. Perhaps humans are the cause of her now. Have you any idea what you're talking about, child? Witches have caused nothing but pain and suffering to the kingdom, this kingdom. Even now, they still spread the fairy tale curse for our innocent subjects. The truth is, I know very little about the time for which it's had a free and able convention. I was very young then. Mother forbade me to leave the palace and visit my room. I know nothing of the people's supposed pain and suffering. Mother kept me away from it, so I could not bring myself to pain. How do you know the curse to our innocent? Our people have been told it day and night to rebuild Angela after the Great War. Our people have dedicated this foundation. And I am endlessly grateful for their determination and resolve. Every day I wonder what you taught you. What your mother taught you. Leave mother out of this. Dear, please. Randy Jarvie, your father didn't mean to. I'm not one of your children. Yet. I do not need your sympathy. Wow. I. Granny, you will show your mother respect. She is not my mother. Set up my fork and knife and stand up. I'm done. Excuse me. Father and I never got on, but our relationship has significantly worsened since we married the baker. My father, the king. It has been 17 years and I have never felt any love from him. He treats him Magellan and Rod, who only entered our life one year ago like his own children. Better than he has ever treated me. This has been my life ever since mother passed away four years ago. Mother was the only one that was there for me, and no one else was. It wasn't for the accident during the Great War, she would still be here. I just saw her face earlier in the morning, Princess. No, I was about to say, isn't that our stepbrother? But no, he is not. Let me guess, it's the King, Queen, or Princess Imagine? Or is it all of them? I ignore his question. Prince, what are you doing here so early? Running some errands for my father. It's Gerald Aiden Leverton, son of the highest knight of the Order of Calderia. His father, Sir Alcaster, has served the royal family for many years. Sir Alcaster is one of the king's most trusted advisors. Three years ago, Fritz was assigned the honor of becoming my personal knight. He should be lucky. But. Oh, is that a compliment I'm reading right now? That's surprising. His presence is the only company I can tolerate nowadays. Shoot in the throne room, then. Thank you. Princess. Yes? You know, I haven't seen you smile once since I've met you. Why is that of any importance? 
still, I do hope to see you smile one day, princess. That won't take up any more of your time. See you at ten. Ten? Don't tell me you've forgotten. Forgotten what? I'm going to town today, remember? I deflate as the realization dawns upon me. It has been two days since the king issued the order. Bernie, I would like you to accompany Magdalene on one of her town outings. Surely you could send Maze with her instead. I would not have requested you to accompany her if I was going to send her with her maids. I want you to make an effort to get along with your sister. Step sister. She is your sister. You will treat her and Ron as if they were your own blood. Okay. Two days from now, you are going to accompany her to the outside. Four years left now. Holy four years? Well, then again, I think if. Well, then again, she's royalty, so I guess that uh, you could stay in the palace all the time, I guess, but. Uh, whatever. Um. Ever since then, you've locked yourself away. Really? Keep your room. Angel was in the grip of war back. Now the game is the same. It's over glory. Glory. I want you to see how beautiful Angel is. Brownie, a princess must know her kingdom. Go with Magdalene and she'll show you the town that you only ever see through your windows. Is that an order? If it needs to be. Are we clear? Brownie, understood. The last time I left the palace four years ago, the king took me with me to check on the people up the third floor and then. Shake my hand with me, that's something to remember. I have saved you. Princess, are you alright? Won't be that bad. Just spoke of good people. How could you be so sure? Wow. Times have changed. People change. That is precisely the problem. Mother never changed. Mother loved me until the end. This is the best case for the better, Princess. I think you'll see that today. If you'll excuse me, I shall see you later. Background. It's cool. They got all the princesses from the fairy tales. I recognize some of them, but not, not all of them. And then this one's kind of creepy. Dolora, do you think witches are capable of bringing back the dead? I wish you could talk to me, you and the others. But dolls are my only friends, they're the only ones I could trust. Unlike humans, they would never betray me. They will never hurt me. They will always be there for me. The moment I saw Delora, I knew she was special. She was different, so ugly and re realistic. It was almost as if she were breathing. She was a gift from the king on my 17th birthday. I only started receiving dolls from him when Mother passed away. Mother did not believe, does not believe in birthday celebrations. But every year at midnight, a letter would appear out of my door. If she did instructions leading me through the palace on an adventure to a room filled with gifts, cakes, and sweets. A child's dream. But I'm fascinated by the dolls, which had always held the little greeting card. A card with the words, I love you on it, signed by M. The card would tell me to keep the celebrations a special secret, but I didn't need to be told that. Mother always found, uh, a way to show me that she could- Hey, I'm just gonna save here. I'll just wait, don't return. Uh... Here we go, we can save. Here we go. In her own way. The secret celebration has stopped as soon as she had disappeared. What do you mean by disappeared? Or did she... You know, like... Uh... Yeah, moving on. You guys know what I'm talking about anyway. Yes? Excuse me, your highness. The king has requested your presence. It better not be another lecture. Tell him I'm on my way. See you later, Delora. Oh! Good morning, Your Highness. Who's this now? Sir Mythros? Sir Mythros, the royal advisor. Father trusts him a great deal, just like he does Sir Alcaster. Every day you look more and more like your mother. Sometimes first Sir Mythros talking to Mother's portrait when he thinks no one's looking. 
must have admired her a lot, but I could not bring myself to think highly of him. I saw that about him that put me on edge. Are you on your way to see the king? I shall not keep you then. Till our next meeting, dear princess. So he kind of seems a little suspicious, to be honest. Your Majesty. Brownie, are you ready? You will enjoy this, Brownie. For the toy shop has lovely dolls. This will be good for you. You'll get to know your sister better, and you'll be able to interact with and learn about the people of Adelaide and Brother's subjects. I'll not learn anything I do not already know. Why do you always believe that the people around you are incapable of good? Because I see how quickly people try and manipulate each other to give what they want. Mother warned me about human nature. You do not see clearly, bro. If you would only open your eyes, you'd be able to see how good people really are. I believe I'm already quite capable of seeing the true nature of people. After all, I've seen that there is no good in you. Saying that to your father. Yes. Yes. That's, that's beautiful. I love that. Do I actually? No. Brownie, I... Where were you when I needed you four years ago? Where have you ever been... Where have you been since? Ever since? I said about overflowing with grief and pain. I just lost my mother in my entire world. I hope that maybe he would have shown me love and compassion. Even just a hug to let me know someone was there. I've been a childish hope. I have been left alone. I did not see him for months. I barely even read, heard his voice. You cannot rely on anyone but yourself. You cannot trust anyone but yourself. That is why you've taught me. Your Majesty. And that I've hurt you. I know that there is nothing I can do to atone for what I did. Please, Ophelia and her children are not part of that. <clears throat> they do not deserve to be hated. In the end, they still matter more to him than I ever did. Brownie, enough. I already, I've already said I would go. Everyone is waiting outside. Shut up the thought of leaving the palace after so many years. Brownie, it would be okay. How could you be so sure? Thank you for agreeing to help him at I will not disobey an order from the king. Excuse me. Okay, guys. Well, um... I'm gonna end the episode here. If uh, you guys want more of this, leave a like. And comment down below what's your favorite fairy tale that you've ever, um... read or watched or whatever else. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.